So should you switch your GLP-1 for maximum weight loss? Patients say, Dr. Sturet, I'm on Wegovy. Should I be switching to ZepBound or should I be on Redditrutide? Now, since that's all over the internet, everybody wants to know about Redditrutide. Today, I'm going to be breaking down what actually matters, not the hype, so you can make a really smart decision on what's best for your body. I'm going to break this down into three main points for you. And I feel like after this, you should have a pretty good idea of where you and your doctor need to go. Before we get started, a quick overview of these medications. We have your GLP-1, which is your OG, your original, Ozempic, Wegovy, semaglutide, just stimulating the GLP-1 receptor. This is going to slow digestion, reduce appetite, lower blood sugar. It's very selective towards that receptor. We find that because of this, it does have a slightly higher side effect profile. And this is something that does turn off people from the medication. I will say with semaglutide that it works great for most people, especially if it's paired with making sure that the hormones are balanced, making sure that the nutrition's in alignment, and you're managing other areas of inflammation in the digestive system so people aren't getting constipated. It tends to work just fine. Semaglutide does have very strong research behind it. However, However, people do get turned off of it because as you increase the dosage, like it says on the back of the box, usually after about 0.5 milligrams, you start to see uh, some pretty serious side effects in people. And because it tells you to increase it once a month and people end up on rather large dosages, side effects can get ugly and people end up getting switched to terzepatide, which is the second class. So this is going to be your Zepbound, your Manjaro. Uh, and of course, if you're going through a compounding pharmacy, it'll just be, it'll just say terzepatide on there. This is going to be GLP-1 and GIP receptors. So slightly less targeted, a little bit more broad, and in general, tends to be tolerated by more people at higher dosages. One of the claims of this medication is, is that people are going to lose weight faster and that there's going to be better muscle preservation. I would argue that this is likely not the case, just what, from what I've seen clinically. Where this probably does stand true is at the higher, more maximum dosages of the medication. Next, we have the one with all the hype, Redditrutide. You see this all over YouTube and social media right now. Really big in the bodybuilder community. Redditrutide is essentially terzepatide, so it's the GLP-1 and GIP targeted, but it does have glucagon in it. You might ask, okay, well, what's glucagon? What's the big deal with glucagon? Think about it like this. GLP-1 and GIP receptors actually act on blood sugar through manipulating insulin and the insulin receptor itself. Glucagon is an actual hormone that acts directly upon blood sugar and it causes blood sugar to be released into circulation. So the argument here is, is that in addition to making your insulin receptors more sensitive, it's actually calling fat out of storage to be burned. Let me go ahead and jump into my main points of where I might go if I was a patient starting on a GLP-1 or considering a switch. Point number one, to answer the question, doctor, should I switch? I would ask you this in return. Are you losing weight currently on your GLP-1 with minimal to no side effects? If you say yes to this, if you're like, yeah, I'm still losing like a pound to a pound and a half a week. I don't really have much constipation or nausea, but I really just think that I expected things to be better on this journey. I expected there to be more weight loss faster. I want to switch to terzepatide. I want to switch to retitrutide. What I would argue here is you have something that's working for you without side effects. And the biggest mistake that I'll see people make is getting hasty when they're not seeing quite the loss, the speed of loss that they are looking for. And instead of trying to make adjustments in their lifestyle, the exercise, the diet, or look in blood work for other things that might be going on, hormonal abnormalities, maybe the thyroid's off, maybe you're just extremely low in iron, and it's, or maybe your digestion is impaired and you're, you have inflammation. There's just so much that could be happening here that for you to all of a sudden just jump ship to the next medication can sometimes cause more harm than good. One, because there's usually a lap period, meaning a lapse period, where you're taking one medication, you stop, now all of a sudden you're completely off, you know, there's no GLP-1 stimulation for maybe a couple weeks while you're in that period of switching. Now all of a sudden you're on terzepatide. Now you actually have to, these dosages aren't apples to apples. For instance, a starting level dosage for semaglutide is 0.25 milligrams, but for terzepatide is 2.5 milligrams. So you might think, oh my gosh, terzepatide is so much stronger. It's not. It's just the way that the medication is dosed in its concentration. Those are both starting level dosages, but it's difficult to compare one to the next. So because of that, what you have to end up doing is now you're on a entry level doses of terzepatide, you're going to have to try to titrate that up with your doctor 
to get you back to the point of where you were on the semaglutide. And since it's not apples to apples, you have no idea of knowing where that's gonna be. And you have a good chance of overshooting the medication if you're following the standard escalation pattern. I'll show you a picture right here. Basically month one, you know, you're at a starting dosage, month two, you're they're doubling it, then they're doubling it again. And so the trouble with this is, is that in trying to get to a place where you were before, just to mirror that level of weight loss, the body is now confused because you took a little time off. Now you've, you're doubling your dosage and you may overshoot the amount that you were originally on and you may end up on a little bit too much. Now, even on terzepatide, what I'll frequently see is that people end up with side effects on this medication as well. Same problem as semaglutide because the dosage is just getting pushed way too hard. Now, my philosophy on these medications, whether it's semaglutide or terzepatide, is simple. Take the lowest effective amount that's going to get you the weight loss with the lowest side effects possible. A lot of times on these GLP-1s, people will have some degree of side effects. Maybe it's a little bit gastrointestinal, perhaps a little bit of constipation. I can usually deal with that with patients pretty easily with making sure that your digestion is tuned up, diet's tuned up, on a good probiotic and on a quality fiber supplement. This is usually enough to make sure that people are going to the bathroom. But at some point, if you keep increasing that medication, you're gonna override all that and you're gonna be sick. Point number two is when would you consider switching? And I wanna outline this for you guys because there are certain times when I will just immediately switch somebody from semaglutide to terzepatide and these are these conditions. Now, let's say that you are on semaglutide and that you are having terrible nausea. Like you're just, you're on a low dosage, I would say, 0.25 milligrams or below. And you every time you inject, you are just like nauseous. You feel like you're gonna throw up, you feel terrible. I literally just had a patient three months ago where she could not even tolerate a half the starting dosage of her GLP-1. And we had to switch her to, to Zepatide. There was no other choice. If we are unable to control somebody's constipation or digestive symptoms, or they are just like, even on a very, very low dosage, just not hungry at all, and it's a problem, I may consider switching them to terzepatide as well. Let's say you are not on a GLP-1 yet, and you are wanting to ask the question, Dr. Strutt, should I start on semaglutide or terzepatide? If you are somebody who is extremely sensitive to like Advil, if you're like, oh my gosh, I can only take just tiny amounts of medication, it just hits me so much different than most people, and you're prone to nausea, and you're very sensitive to smells, if you're just very sensitive overall, then I would definitely consider starting with terzepatide first because it's just a little bit better tolerated by most people. The other thing that I would add to this is if you were somebody who just has extreme constipation as it stands, and you're like, oh, I really want to get started on a GLP-1, but I'm a little nervous about it slowing down my digestive tract and me getting more constipated. So maybe just start at terzepatide if you're in that position. So point number three, you might be saying to yourself at this point, Dr. Strett, yeah, you talked all about semaglutide, you talked all about terzepatide, but what about Reta? What about Retitrutide? And to you, I would say this. I think patients that are taking Retitrutide, I've seen quite a few of them now, they're getting good results. I, I don't see how they wouldn't just because it's still terzepatide plus the glucagon. So it's going to call fat out of storage to be burned within the blood sugar, essentially. To date, there's been no FDA approval for this medication. There's been no real approval whatsoever. The research looks pretty good. I believe that retitrutide is going to be a major player in the years to come. However, I really don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Semaglutide and terzepatide are more fundamental, more basic peptides. There's a lot less going on. And as a provider, I've just grown extremely comfortable with what they do without adding in glucagon. I think that is a little bit of a wild card. Out of the patients that I've seen, I've seen people have a little bit more of a side effect profile. Weight loss has been great, but let's be clear about something. When I'm working with patients, remember, I'm using the lowest effective dosage of the medication, meaning that as soon as we get somebody to a place where they're losing weight effectively, pound and a half or more a week, and they're not having significant side effects, we leave them there until it's no longer effective for them. And we, and even then, we may only bump them up by a unit or two to continue the ball rolling. I can confidently say that I can get a patient to lose weight with terzepatide or semaglutide without needing to use retitrutide. And while so many YouTubers claim that it is the new king of GLPs, I'm not ready to go there just yet. As for now, 
I prefer the proven combination, semaglutide or terzepatide with functional medicine support and lifestyle accommodation where we literally supercharge your health so you do not need these GLP-1 medications for the rest of your life. And you may be somebody out there who's thinking, well, I want to be on them for the rest of my life. And I would say, that's awesome. But wouldn't it be great to be able to drop down to a dosage that was a microdose instead of having to stay up at the higher tier dosage of the med. To recap for you, the best medication is the one that you tolerate well, that you get results without wrecking your digestive system, wrecking your gut, you're able to have bowel movements. If your weight loss stalls on one of these meds, don't just switch. Maybe it's time to look under the hood. And this is exactly what we do inside of our functional medicine program. We literally combine GLP-1 therapy with lab-based root cause medicine to make sure your metabolism heals long-term and that your results are sustainable. Instead of putting you in a position where you have success on this medication, you lose 30, 40 pounds, you come off of it and you gain it all back like that because nothing else changed along the way. If you are concerned about that or you wanna prevent that in the future, click the link down below to be able to apply to work with our team. If you're interested in watching a lab review where we go ahead and review somebody's labs and go over the different recommendations that we make, go ahead and check this video out up here in the corner. Otherwise, you guys, God bless you. I hope you have a great week. Take care.